a.m. broadcast. Again, welcome to our 6 a.m. broadcast. I'm Brian Chewitt for Anita and the Man, and we welcome you here to MCM Ministries, Bamba Wailite, Anita and the Man. And today, is on, for the next 10 Sundays, we begin a series of, of the book of Joshua. We're starting it today at Joshua chapter 1, 1 through 9. Joshua chapter 1, 1 through 9, and we are speaking of just in sight. The importance of prayer, that strength of what God can make all your dreams come true, and you're just in sight, just like the land of Canaan. And we go forward in the matchless name of Jesus, before the throne of God, and pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your love, your, your support. We thank you for the how you brought us from the natural to the supervision. We thank you for the Sunday of all the strength you can bring down upon us as we, as we lift up your repentance, our repentance daily, your prayers daily, as you raise the praise daily, and as you pour down these your new mercies every day to us. We thank you in the earnest growth and, and, and the sensational love that you express to us and can give to us and the strength to endure. And, and wherever we are in the world, evening time and afternoon time, going into, into the afternoon, we lift all into thankfulness of what you have done for us, what you shall do for us. In the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we love thee. Brothers and sisters, in just a few minutes ago, I found out what's called Tornado Alley in the Midwest section of the United States, that about a half a dozen people were killed. And we left all, now this is just another branch of experience, um, what occurred, and so we left up all those families that have gone through this tribulation this past weekend here, and this is not the first tornado that, that has occurred that this weekend. It's ranged from uh, Topeka, Kansas, so Norman, Oklahoma, all the way up to Nebraska. So please put the, these families in your prayer list this morning. Let's get going into our, our prayer lesson. We're going to just start with a couple of scriptures. Our foundation scripture is is to be found in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. We are engaged in warfare with spiritual enemy, who is far more powerful than we are. Ephesians 6, verse 12 tells, tells us, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And in our own strength, we cannot defeat our enemies. The good news is, our enemies are nowhere near to as powerful as God. In John chapter 4, verse 4, because greater is he that is in you than he is than he that is in the world. Brothers and sisters, this is your time of strength. Mark eleven twenty two. have faith in God. Believe what you say in your heart, and you shall receive it, and you shall have it. And in these times, brothers and sisters, in these times, Likewise, Romans 8.26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth with our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which, which cannot be uttered. The importance of prayer. This is not something that we should just say for during before mealtime or just for a few seconds before bedtime. So can you honestly tell me, is your prayer life strong? Get into some time with prayer today. The importance of your dreams are laying right before you, and those dreams are from God. And we go, and so let's get into where we are right now. Joshua chapter 1, 1 through 9. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land of which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. For, pla for every place that the sole of your foot shall tread on, that I have I given you unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and, and the Lebanon, even unto the great river, the, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all thy days of thy life, as I was with, with Moses. So I will be with thee, I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide an inheritance 
for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto the fathers to give them. Verse 7, 8, and 9. Only be thou strong, and very courageous. Thou mayest observe to do according to all thy law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to thy right hand, or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt mediate thereon day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for, for them, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and good courage, be not afraid, and to be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest, whithersoever thou goest. This beautiful moment, this expression of God's love, is giving you that dream. Everything is in sight. Everything is laying before you. And there are many misunderstandings surrounding the Christian life, your new life. A trip, let's say, to your local bookstore, Bible bookstore. The shelves are lined with books that claim to be able to teach us how to make the Christian life stronger and better and may have and the church more acceptable in the world. The truth of the matter is that there is nothing more easy or acceptable about the Christian life. It is not always easy to live for Jesus. The gospel of Jesus Christ will never be acceptable to the world. We are not out for a day in the park. We are not in a playground. You and I are on a battleground. And yes, there will be many times where we wish we, wish we, we were still on that playground. And we go, brothers and sisters, in war against Satan every day. Every day. Satan does not take a time out which I'm not really a big fan of this time out, but we should go forward in the matchless name of Jesus. Thus, even in the midst of our battles, there is always hope for victory, hope, faith, and love, the wisdom that God pours upon us. Romans 8.31 When shall we then say, say to these things, of God before us, who can be against us? Romans 8.37 8, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In fact, this great poem, this beautiful email to you, this love poem, this love book, the Bible, tells us that we are recipients of victory through the, through the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Be thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. While we are engaged in the battle with evil, there is an expectation that we can and want, we will walk in victory in our lives. For me... This is what the book of Joshua represents. This is our victory in our lives. A good study that we'll be doing for the next 10 Sundays of the topic of victory. At this point, op the book opens Moses, the great leader of Israel, has died. A new leader named Joshua has been appointed to, to lead the nation of Israel unto Canaan. After 40 years of wandering In the wilderness, Israel is about to take possession of the land of God promised Abraham many centuries earlier. Genesis chapter 12, verse 7, And the Lord appeared unto Abram, and said unto, and said, unto thy seed I will give this land. And there built he, he, he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. We like, the book is about the, the battles of Israel based in order to claim the, the, that promised from God. Joshua is a book about warfare, painful defeats, suffering, and great victories. It is a book that has much to teach the modern Christian, much about obtaining spiritual victory in our lives. This dawning of a new day. In 1 through 9, what we just read in ver verses, chapter 1, 1 through 9, it's God's command. And a call to claim the land. In 1 through 4, in these verses, Joshua is reminded that the Lord has already given the land of Canaan to the children of Israel. Already. That's not possibilities he has. Moses, the man of God, is dead. But the work of God goes on. Never think of a minute that God can, can make it with you. Joshua is commanded to lead the people into Canaan 
to claim the land that they had been promised by the Lord. The land was given to them back in Genesis chapter 12, verse 7, and the promises were reaffirmed to every, to every succeeding gen generation of the nation of Israel. The land was indeed their land. There was no need for them to continue wandering around in the wilderness. They had a land, all they had to do was claim it, claim it, claim it, just like you have a dream. You see that dream, it's an overwhelming dream. You know it's never been presented to you before. Claim it in the name of Jesus. Take your dream, your prayers, your fasting, your church time. Get into that time right now, brothers and sisters. Feel that excitement flowing within you and for you. Feel that new time frame coming into all of us. And you're not going to be like the rest of the world anymore. You, you're a peculiar individual. God created you. God has exploded his love inside you. His son, Jesus Christ, died for you. Come stand before the cross and look into the eyes of Jesus. Look into the eyes of Jesus and he shall look upon your heart and change you. And show you that empty tomb. He will bring you to the door of faith. Open the door of faith for you. You'll be walking into your new house called the house of salvation. This brings us, brothers and sisters, to that new time for you, the new growth, the love, the leadership, what he ex is expressing for all of you. This is, brothers and sisters, your endless rhyme. God's love never, never, never ends. It doesn't rest. It is always there. You have that hedge of protection around you, giving you everything, everything that you need, everything that you desire. And this, brothers and sisters, brings us to the dawning of a new day. Claim it. It is yours. I look around for, to all the churches that my wife and I speak in. I see Christians who represent more of a defeated expression than a life of victory. They struggle with their own sins and all who and who for all intents and purposes are wandering around in spiritual wilderness. It does not have to be that way. God has a place for victory for you. He has promised us that we can live in that place of peace and blessing. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and making manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. And again, Romans 8, 37. By all, not all these things that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Romans 8, 37. Be thanks be to God, which gives us, us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Again, hearing is receiving, but is hearing done. So Anita and the man here will be bringing you the same scriptures, similar passages, until you are doing, receiving, and hearing correctly. God wants you to open up that new mind, the renewing of the mind, that new heart that he gave you. Feel the strength of your spirit and not be afraid of it. See, faith is a substance, substance of things so far, the evidence of things not seen. Faith cannot be seen, smelled, or touched. It is not a guarantee. You have to go forward with, a, with choices, and choices are not predestined. To give yourself, yourself, that expression of strength. God gives us that free will. But the predestined goal is thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Matthew 6, 13. Matthew 7, 7. You hear me say a lot. Ask, seek, and knock. Ask, seek, and knock. I believe with all my experience from my heart that God did not save you to see you defeated. Most of the time we are defeated because we refuse to walk in victory. Walk in victory today. I believe there is a place of conquest for every child of God today. That we can claim victory for our, for, for our own lives, for our own verses, our own paragraphs, that the new breath that God has given us in that new life. But we need to remember as, as we set out to claim our canon. By the way, the, the land God gave to Israel was over 300,000 300, square miles. They only claimed about 30,000 square miles of that. Of course, they were not limited to, to the 300,000. 300, they were given as much as they were willing to claim. Verse 3, the extent of their victory was only limited by their faith. 
The same is true with us today. Don't limit your faith. Take it all. Take it all. And God's going to bless you abundantly every day, but we cannot limit ourselves. We cannot limit anything about, about this. Ask the Lord, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Matthew 7, 7. John, 1 John chapter 5, 14 through 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whosoever, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Now, many years ago, it started with one step forward for Anita and the man. Here's truly Brian Hewitt. We could not have done this alone. God sent respected and different ministers in different parts of, of the world to come and to be with us what's, wherever, wherever we go and whatsoever we do. We come into the expressions of God's love, his obedience, as you move forward. And if you're not saved, let's take this step forward today. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's repeat this important part of your life right now together. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner, and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place, paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn from my sin and accept Jesus Christ, as my personal Lord and Savior. I commit myself to you, O Lord, and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life and to make me and take control and to make me into, into that kind of person you have always wanted me to be. Thank you, Jesus, for changing me. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me forward. For in the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we love thee. That's my wife also singing right now in your name. I am praising your name and the angels of heaven right now about our singing your name before the throne of God. Not a bad move right now that you did. So Anita and I also invite you to become a relationship with us, to come and visit us at BrianChewitt.com, BrianChewitt.com. Get to go about us, search us, know us, contact us through our contact link, through email, phone call, letter. And we want you to travel with, with us. We want you to be a financial partner with us. Join our, our medical team, our evangelical team, our translation teams as we go forward. In the matchless name of Jesus, bringing forward all his love and his abundance and his truth. Uh, we are a 501c certified church here in the United States. If you don't wish to send a donation link, a, a donation through our link over our website, you can, our, our address is right over our contact link. And do make your check payable to MCM Ministries. Our, our full name is Morningstar Communications Network. Again, Morningstar Communications Network, MCM Ministries. And we thank you for your prayers and support ahead of time. And you trust me, your your financial blessing will come back to you 700 fold, 1,000 fold, however you want this to come back to you. Just believe in your heart and it shall. And verses, chap chapter and verses 5 through 6 in chapter 1 of Joshua. A call to, to have confidence to the Lord. Joshua is reminded some very precious promises in these verses. Notice what God has promised him. The promise of victory over every enemy. Not like every other one, but every enemy. The promise of, of the presence and power of God. The promise of a faithful faithfulness of God. The promise of absolute victory. The promise of God to keep his promises. What did Joshua have to do to make these things happen? Just one thing. Just one thing, and just for you as well. Trust God. God was going to give Israel the victory. Joshua was merely the instrument that God had chosen to use to, use, to, use to do it. These things were going to happen. For Joshua was Joshua to be a part of it, all he had to do was have faith in God. Mark 11, 22. <clears throat> May I remind you that the same promises God made to Joshua are still valid for us today, please. You can still count on the Lord to do everything he promised Joshua he would do. He still gives us victory over all of our enemies. 1 John chapter 5, 4 through 5. He still is ever present, Hebrew chapter 13, verse 5, and our powerful Matthew 28, verse 18. 
He is still faithful. Matthew 28, verse 20. He still gives absolute victory. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1557. Revelation chapter 4 and verse 27. And he still keeps his promises. Romans chapter 4, verse 21. Trust God. What do we have to do to see these things come to pass in our lives? Trust God. When we learn to place our faith in God at all times, at all times, in every situation, then we walk in victory in our lives. When when everything else fails, faith will never stand the test. Faith will stand the test. Sin will not stand the test. Hebrews 11.1, 1, I just said it recently. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We will not fail the Lord. But he will never fail the believer who has their faith in him. Verses 7 and 8, a call to carry out the law. The Lord tells Joshua that if he is to lead the people of God to rest in Canaan, then he must take heed to the law of God. Remember, the law is an essential step to entering, into, entering our Canaan as well. Notice what the law, Lord, to, to notice what the Lord to Joshua about the law and how this applies in our lives today. Verse seven: He was to keep the law. He has to do everything the law said to, said to do, not turning from it, at least a little bit. No, no personal translation. He was to meditate on the law. Day and night his mind was to be occupied with the law. He was to love it and keep it filled with his heart. This was in order that his life might be centered in the law and therefore in the will of God. He was to prosper by honoring the Lord, honoring the law. God's promise to Joshua was that if he lived his life around the law of God, God would prosper him in everything he did and that God would make him very successful. There's a reason for us to live today. I, th I thank the Lord that we are, not, we are not under the law today. I praise Him that we are under grace. Under grace. Having said that, excuse me, brethren. Having said that, I would like to say that many in our day have concluded, have concluded that since we are no longer under the law, that, that, that they are free to do anything they please. I want to remind you that such an attitude is dangerous and is guaranteed to bring you to ruin. If you want to live in a Christian victory today, you too must develop a love for the Word of God. Just as Joshua was commanded to honor the law, we are commanded to honor the Book of God. We are to feed, we are to be fed on the Bible. First Peter chapter two verse two, Job chapter twenty-three verse twelve. We are to live by the Bible. Psalms one nineteen verse eleven. Psalms chapter 1, 1 through 3, Psalms 37, verse 31, and Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16, and Psalms 119, verse 105. We are blessed when these things are true in our lives, true in our lives, Psalms 1, chapter 1 through 3. Now, with this, let me pray over you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and listen to the cry of my supplication, Psalms 86, verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Do not fret or have any anxiety about everything, but in every circumstance and everything by prayer and petition, definite request with thanksgiving. Continue to make your wants known to God. By earnest and unwearied and steadfast in your life, being both alert and instant in your prayer with thanksgiving. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Hear me when I call. O God of my righteous, you have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer, Psalms chapter 4, verse 1. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord receives my prayer. And seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6. We, brothers and sisters, are blessed to give this to you, to you, or to you this living word of God. It is be the mindfulness a call to a call to courage a call in leadership in the midst of all these things the lord calls to joshua to do three times god calls himself encourages joshua to be strong and courageous these words carry the idea of standing firm and strong in the face of opposition 
Joshua would need great courage for, to face the enemies of Israel and to lead the people to victory in the Promised Land. God's challenge to Joshua is for him to stand. By God's help, I'll stand and not fail all the days of my life. By God's help, we can stand strong in the faith. Are you standing for the Lord? We need men in courage of conviction and integrity of the faith, hope, faith, and love, wisdom, blessed by God, to so move this world out to where it is now, to be peacemakers and changemakers of this world, to bring total victory in the name of Jesus, to guide us and bless us with everything. Your cannon is, just, is in sight. You have God's command. It is high time that uh, we, the church, stop serving as a doormat for the world and for the devil. It is time we stood up and made our stand with the people of God and heal God's call to be brave and strong in these days, to be strong in these days, to, to be a part of the everlasting love of God, to bring his earnest of truth coming before us and loving us and guiding us, bringing forward to his name. Now, brothers and sisters, just to give you a brief outline, so for the next 10 Sundays, we're on the book of Joshua. During Monday through Friday, the 6th hour, we continue with our book of, of Proverbs. We give you several s scriptures from the New Testament in all of our lessons. And we also are giving you the book of Revelation at the 6 p.m. hour, Monday through Saturday. So, <clears throat> with this meet, with this meet, we are bringing you from the diet of milk to the knowledge of meat, the meat of the Lord. We give you this strength, this honor, this love that comes before us and everything that we express to you. We, Anita and I invite you to stand and to be a part of our ministry, to travel with us, to be a financial partner with us. Come to get to know us at BrianTewitt.com, BrianTewitt.com. We look forward to, for your prayers and support ahead of time. And again, keep up to date, keep all the updates to us through our going visiting, visiting us at BrianTewitt.com, BrianTewitt.com. All, let me just share some scriptures before closing out. All of you must keep awake. Give strict attention, be cautious and active. And watch and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Matthew 26, verse 41. Matthew 21, verse 22. And what, whatever you ask in your prayer, having faith and really believing, you will receive. I, I stress this enough, don't I? Believe in your heart you shall receive it and you shall have all all and all James chapter 5 verse 13 is anyone among you afflicted he should pray is anyone glad at heart he should sing praise to God James chapter 5 verse 16 confess to one another therefore your faults your slips your false steps your offenses your sins and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored the yearners the earnest prayer of righteous man makes tremendous power available. Your dynamics and, and it's working. The dynamics of the Lord. His truth, his love. Let's go forward before the throne of God and pray out. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your time. We thank you for your growth and your substantial truth, a truth that we never felt before. The truth shall set us all free. We thank you for this road of grace that leads us to the straight and narrow. Many are called and few are chosen. We thank you for this word today as we bless the next ten Sundays from the book of Joshua. We thank you in all the coordinates of the truth and the strength you have given us. We have strength in God. We have the victory. We, we have the victory. We have the victory. We go to our land of Canaan and we claim it. We don't limit. We claim everything that God has given us. And our faith is no longer limited. I say our faith is no longer limited. In Jesus' name we pray. Again, brethren, I stress that don't limit yourself, don't limit your faith. God has given you an abundance of a new land to walk into. Take it, claim it, it's yours.
Okay? And that concludes our broadcast for this morning. On behalf of Anita and the man, I'm Brian Tewitt. We thank you for your time until next time. And that concludes our broadcast. To keep up to dates on all of our information at BrianTewitt.com, BrianTewitt.com. And we walk by faith, not by sight. Au revoir. Adios. Good day for the people.